One of the challenges facing geologists in the field is being able to predict the geometry of structures at the scale of cross sections using observations at outcrops. Here we're going to look at folds and we'll use two concepts, convergence and facing. Let's set the problem up, seeing what these guys are looking at on the outcrop. OK, so we can identify a number of features on here. First of all, here's the bedding. And running across the outcrop is a shaped fabric, the cleavage, which is oriented more or less vertical and has an asymmetric relationship to bedding. Well, let's step back and see where this fits. Here's the outcrop they were looking at. This is the part in detail we were just looking at. And the question is, could you have predicted that the outcrop they were looking at sat on this side of an upright sin form? In other words, using these relationships, was the fold predictable? So let's consider how bedding and cleavage relate to one another in folds. So here's a cartoon. Let's imagine these yellow layers are sandstone and they are embedded within a purple siltstone unit which has a cleavage picked out by those thin black lines. And the cleavage is almost parallel to the axial surfaces of the folds. So we call this axial planar cleavage. So to set this up, we'll imagine that cleavage betrays a shear sense on the limbs of the fold. It's not how the cleavage actually forms, but it's a useful visualisation. So here it is. Let's imagine the cleavage initiates at 90 degrees to bedding and then with folding deflects. And the sense of deflection gives a shear sense which varies around the fold structure. So here on this limb, we can see a shear sense. The outer layer shears towards the hinge and the sense reverses limb to limb. At the hinge, there's no asymmetry, there's no shear on the hinges. This imagines that the cleavage is tracking the sense of flexural shear in folding. The sense of asymmetry is termed vergence. Vergence is defined as the sense of apparent shear of the top of the bed as currently found with respect to the base. So in our little inset diagram, the sense of vergence is to the left. The top of the bed is sheared leftwards with respect to the right in the inset diagram. So let's apply this to a natural example. Let's pick out the bedding and the cleavage in these sandstone siltstone couplets. The cleavage is in red, the bedding is in yellow. We're only really illustrating this in one bed for clarity. Notice the asymmetry. So imagine the cleavage, the red line, starting off perpendicular to bedding in the orientation of the black line. We just have to think about how it rotates to achieve the orientation that we see today. So that's the sense of vergence picked out by the arrow pair. Now we can use this to predict the position of this outcrop with respect to the larger scale fold structures within which it sits. We can use the orientation to forecast the axial surface orientation and the location of antiform and sinform hinges. So let's step back. The cleavage, if it's axial planar, therefore predicts the orientation of the axial surface of the fold. So if the cleavage here is inclined, these are inclined folds dipping to the right in our view. And we can draw the fold structures on like this to honour the sense of vergence. So if we take our cartoon diagram, we just have to match up the cleavage with the orientation that we see it in the outcrop with our cartoon in the right corner and then find which part of the structure matches the outcrop we're looking at. So that gives us the fold structure. We can use the cleavage orientation to forecast the orientation of the fold axial surfaces by assuming it is parallel. And we can use the sense of asymmetry of cleavage with respect to bedding to establish which limb we are on. 
if there was no asymmetry, we would be on a hinge area. So let's go back to this outcrop and ask whether the fold was predictable. There's our bedding in yellow and our cleavage in red, and we can see whether it works. So there's the sense of vergence. Take our diagram and rotate it so that it's in the correct orientation and relationship to the outcrop that we see. And we can see that to the right of both of those observation areas picked out by the ellipse, to the right is a sin form, both in the sketch and in the outcrop. The sin form lies to the right. If the cleavage is axial planar, it gives the attitude of the fold. We're dealing with an upright fold. That's our prediction. That's the outcrop demonstrating the viability of our prediction. This is a two-dimensional representation. Let's just remind ourselves of a three-dimensional relationship between cleavage and folds. If the cleavage is more or less axial planar, then the intersection of bedding with cleavage is parallel to the fold hinge line. Another really useful relationship. The plunge of the bedding cleavage intersection will be the plunge of the fold hinge line. So we use vergence to find the position on the major fold. We can use cleavage to estimate the attitude of the axial surface. And we can use the bedding cleavage intersection to predict the orientation of the fold hinge line. So that's cleavage, and it's a really useful minor or small scale structure. But you also get small scale folding associated with larger scale folds. So here's a small fold structure, and we're now going to develop the concept of fold versions. It works in the same way as cleavage versions that we've just been looking at. So it's the sense of apparent shear of the upper side of a layer relative to the lower. And you can see you have minor fold structures that are asymmetric pairs which have that geometry with respect to the shear sense. The relationship between the trend of axial surfaces on there shown by those gold lines with respect to the enveloping surface of the folds is asymmetric. That sense of asymmetry is the same as if the enveloping surface was bedding and the axial surfaces was cleavage. So we can take the same relationships as we do for cleavage and bedding. So again, the way it works, we have a notional deflection of the axial surface towards the enveloping surface. And you record the vergence like this towards a geographic direction. In this case, our geography is left and right. So the shear sense here is towards the right. The vergence of the folds is towards the right, both in the photograph and in our sketches. So how do minor folds work around larger scale fold structures? We can see that the sense of asymmetry varies from limb to limb. We can see at the hinge area that the folds are symmetric. In other words, the relationship of the axial surfaces of our minor folds and their enveloping surface, that relationship is 90 degrees. So let's apply this to this example here from the Alps. The way we do this then is we're going to construct a small set of folds through our layers, and then pick the axial surfaces like this, inclined gently downwards to the left. And we can find an enveloping surface here for the top of these structures. Notice that the axial surfaces in red are oblique to the enveloping surface picked out by the pecked green line. So there's a sense of apparent shear defined by these arrows. So that's the fold vergence sense. So we can represent that here in the sketch and see that we are in this part of a fold structure. We have a sin form down to the right and an antiform up and to the left. So fold vergence complements the cleavage vergence approach to find the position of outcrops relative to major fold structures. So identifying minor fold asymmetries in outcrops like this help us to place these outcrops in the context of larger scale folds. So that's vergence. The other concept we need to introduce when building cross sections is facing. Facing is defined as the direction of younging along the fold axial surface. So it works for rocks where there is a known stratigraphic order. In other words, we need to build in 
observations of sedimentary structures. In this case, if we assume the rocks were deposited with coarse grains at the bottom and fining upwards, then we can use the grading to define an age sequence in the rocks. Hence, these folds are upward facing. Folds with older rocks in the core are called anticlines. Folds with younger rocks in the core are called synclines. It's only if we have the stratigraphic order that we can use these terms. So vergence and facing are two simple concepts that can frame observations, which, if carefully recorded, can be used to predict structures as we work along a transect, helping to build up a larger scale cross-section. These minor structures have major importance in betraying the position of outcrops on larger scale folds.